Hello, and welcome back to DoD Media. Unless it's your first time, in which case, welcome. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create anamorphic bokeh balls in After Effects. Now, there's a lot of talk all around the place about how to recreate an anamorphic sort of lens flare that you get from an anamorphic lens uh, within After Effects without having shot with an anamorphic lens. But very few people actually talk about the bokeh balls, which you can see a few of them there in the background. Um, they're perfectly round. But if you've ever noticed an anamorphic shot, they're sort of oval shaped because the picture is squeezed back in. Now, there's a few ways that you can do this, actually. Well, I can think of two ways. You can do this within After Effects, so I will show you both. So let's jump right in. All right, so here's an example of something, a composition that I made entirely in After Effects. Um, and this is using a few elements. So this couple cut out is just a picture that I did a Google search for. Um, this element around them is just a, a plexus web that I made. Uh, the background is actually a shot of Piccadilly Circus in London, uh, which was in focus, which I blurred. And then here you've got another foreground element, which was, I think, another cutout of another person. And then I added in some flares, which you can see there's that anamorphic flare. But what I'm interested in for this tutorial is this kind of bokeh shape that you see here. Now these ones I guess I kind of screwed up that I didn't make them oval shaped because if you're shooting with a, an anamorphic lens everything will be oval shaped. You'll never see a perfect circle in the bokeh. You will if you film a perfect circle but in the bokeh whatever is out of focus it'll always be oval shaped and you can see that kind of in the background here but what I'm going to show you is how to recreate something like this but where the bokeh is a lot more apparent and in a beautiful oval shape. So let's uh, just get rid of these two things here because they were for that. Right, I've got a little 4K composition here. You don't have to work in 4K if you don't want to. Um, you can work however you want. Let's import some stuff. So I've got, uh, that's the composition. Right, so that's the original frame of them holding hands and I've cut it out in Photoshop. So let's import that. Okay, composition, uh, let's just bring it in as footage because I've actually already gotten rid of the uh, background there. Okay, and then let's bring in something else, the street, okay, cool. And let's just start with those two things first. Let's drag them in here, drop them down. Now obviously these are a lot smaller and I think I may have made that previous thing in a 1080 um, full HD comp instead of a 4K comp, but that's okay. We're gonna stretch it up. Let's do it. So uh, let's just bring that up to like there and bring this um, up to about there. Right, now that looks a bit crap because not only is the light on them all wrong, but also you'd, you'd never get all of that in focus. You never get all those people in focus. So what you could do is on the street.jpg, you could come up to effects and presets and type in camera lens blur. And that will allow you to add this filter, the camera lens blur filter, to the background picture. Now, the camera lens blur effect is, it's bloody powerful. It's basically the entire system that the camera if you're making a 3D composition, the entire system that the camera uses, but all for focus and blur. And you can really do some some amazing stuff with it. I mean, you look at the, the beautiful bokeh that's creating. It's, uh, it's quite something. So let's say we want 10, no, maybe 15. 15% blur, that, that gives us some nice bokeh balls there, okay? Now the roundness, we want it to be 100 because we we want those bokeh balls to be perfect little circles, right? Let's go with an octagon, eight bladed lens. That sounds good. Now, diffraction fringe. The diffraction fringe is basically how bright and sharp the outside of the bokeh ball is compared to the inside. And by dragging this fringe up, you will actually make the outside brighter and more apparent, but the inside will be a bit more faded. 
Now, I think this is down to the kind of lens that you're using. Some lenses do this more than others. I'm not sure if it's to do with the, the type of glass, the elements, or if it's to do with any coating or how it works. If you know the, you know, the physics of it, please share with the group. Uh, but I'm just going to whack that up to 500 because it, it allows me to really sharpen up those, uh, those bokeh balls. Now blur map, I don't have a blur map because I'm not using a blur map. I want to blur the entire picture. And gain, again here we can add a tiny bit of gain for the highlights, say 10. And we'll just bring the threshold down a bit so that it, it affects more um, of the highlights. Like the start point is lower. And repeat edge pixels, yeah, why not? Okay. So that's cool. That's that's a pretty out of focus bokeh shot, right? But it's not anamorphic. So what we do is come up to aspect ratio here. Now 1.0 is a square aspect ratio, right? However, if we drop this down to half so that the circle is twice as tall as it is wide. Boom. Suddenly we're looking at these beautiful anamorphic looking bokeh balls. And what's even better is if you bump this blur up to 25, say, those get bigger. Now this tool is bloody powerful. Uh, let's just add a little bit of color correction here. So I'm just gonna add a solid. Yeah, that's good. Okay. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. What you can then do is just add in some bars if you want, you could crop it, you could, you could do what you want really. Uh, so that's one way of doing that. That's the camera lens blur effect. Now, if you want to animate this, it's a bit of a pain because you're having to link a lot of layers to a lot of effects and it's just, it's not great because you're going to have a shitload of keyframes everywhere. Uh, so instead of doing camera lens blur, what we're going to do is delete that. We're going to make these two layers 3D and we're going to create a new camera. Okay, enable depth of field. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Now, the hands need to be, if we switch this to custom view one, the hands need to be close to the camera, right? So that's where the focus point is. The background, however, doesn't need to be close to the camera. This actually needs to be very far away from the camera. Let's say it needs to be about that far away from the camera. Okay, now if we go back to active camera, you'll see it's very small. Now, that yeah, that's gonna happen because it's far away from the camera. So we need to scale it up and scale it up and scale it up and scale it up like so. And now if I hit double A on the camera, camera one, uh, you can see depth of field is on, but it doesn't look blurry. The reason it doesn't look blurry is because the aperture is only 25.3, which is just pretty crap. Um, you're never going to get any depth in that. You're just going to, it's, it's going to be all focus, massive depth. We want narrow depth so that it's out of focus. So let's just go ahead and put, uh, let's start with a thousand and see how that looks. Yeah. Okay. We can work with that. Now we don't want fast rectangle. We want a octagon again. And I'll just switch to quarter resolution there because otherwise it's going to take forever. Okay, now the roundness, we want that 100 again. The diffraction fringe, we want it smack up to 100. Okay, and this here, we want to switch back to 0 0.5. Okay, now the highlight gain, let's put that back to 10. Let's drop the threshold down to like, to like that much. Cool. And now all we need to do is dial in a little bit more aperture. So let's try 2000. Oh, that's maybe a bit too much. 2150,000. Okay. Now you can see it's not, it's not as pronounced as it is, although that could be because I'm in um, quarter resolution. Let's just render this out. So you can see it's not as pronounced as it is with the camera lens blur effect. But 
at the same time, it means that if you want to, you can create a null object, make it 3D, attach the camera to the null object. I'm just gonna switch this to auto so it goes down because otherwise it won't handle it. And you can hit P and move your Z around. And by moving your Z axis around, you see you get actual 3D movement with the anamorphic bokeh background balls. Whoop, that's the end of the frame. So there you go. I mean, personally, I prefer the look of camera lens blur. It really, it really does its job. But there you go. That is two ways for you to create anamorphic bokeh blur balls in After Effects using effects rather than an anamorphic lens. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and I hope it makes your shots look awesome. Cheers.